Hello starlets and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm a bit scared <laughs> to tell you the truth. We're doing Mary Poppins nails. Yes, it was my idea. Yes, it's on my board of ideas right here. It is right here next to me. Big board of ideas. I don't know why I put myself through this, but this is gonna be a really hard one and you're coming along the journey with me. I'm dragging you in with me. Oh, yes, we've got new t-shirts too. So, you know, excited about that. Like, you know, see, wee, like, so we're happy about that. With all that said and out the way, please send good vibes in a form of a like and also a very lovely comment because this is gonna be tricky and you're along with the journey and I appreciate that. I do like that you're coming along with me. So if you haven't already, please do subscribe and turn on your bell notification button and let's get on and do these Mary Poppins nails. Okay, so we've got our nails and I've gone in and lightly, just very light, one coat of white and went over them with a matte top coat and with some pencil, I just sketched out roughly where Mary Poppins and Bert's face is going to be on the nail, just so that I don't do them too small or too big, um, just so that I get a general idea. So this is going to be where they are, um, where they are um, in the film when they're at the carnival, whatever you want to call it. So there's going to be two carousel horses and then Bert and Mary Poppins here. Okay, so first of all, um, starting with Mary Poppins herself, of course, we've got to start with Mary Poppins. So I'm going in with a light skin tone colour from the Beatles Gel Polish range, and I do carry on using um, their product on this whole set. So once I've filled this, I then cure it for 60 seconds. I always cure the first base colour for a full 60 seconds just so that you don't get any bubbling or rippling and on lighter bits where there's a little bit less polish I only cure for 30 seconds um, and if it's literally the smallest amount like uh, just a very thin outline I can flash cure it for 20 um, or 15 seconds. So. What I'm doing here is her hair, just laying that down. We are gonna darken it up, don't worry. Um, we're just plotting it out as we go along. So it's one of those things where it's like, um, to get tone in things, we start off with the lighter color and then add the depth and highlights as we go along later. So here now I'm going in and placing down her eyes um, where I want them to be and her eye shape with white. If you've been watching my um, channel for a while, you'll know that um, I've only just started recently getting into doing uh, portraits or like realism, if you like. Um, I've never really dabbled in <laughs> realism or portraits as such. Um, back in school, a um, little bit of story time. Um, <laughs> I've always liked art and um, you know, I done um, art and I got an A-level in art and GCSEs, so that's fantastic, but I never did do a portrait, not once. So I managed to wingle my way around that um, and build up the grade by doing other things better. So <laughs> this is me now uh, trying to do um, semi-realistic um, portrait pictures. <laughs> Why not? Um, it's interested me to try and like, you know, start doing uh, more stuff on nails so I'm trying to give it a go and I've done a couple of videos now by doing portraits and it just takes practice so you know if you're wanting to start doing um, anything at all really on nails it takes practice so I'm much more of a um, cartoony drawer 
I much prefer to use my dark lines for an outline. I love using black to, you know, give it a, a proper dominant outline of, there it is. Whereas obviously with, as I'm saying, I'm literally putting a dark outline out right now as we say this. <laughs> that doesn't count. Um, but with, uh, what am I saying? Portraits. Um, you can't use a, a dark, thick outline um, around their face because it doesn't exist. It's not there. So it's all down to shading, um, which I'm still learning to do. Um, depth is a big one <laughs> for me. Um, so yeah, we're practicing on that and trying to get that down. Um, but yeah, this is definitely a hard one to do. Um, you know, someone's real face and yeah, mouths is hard as well. So <laughs> I actually um, went to the library the other day with my partner and um, we got some books out on uh, drawing realism. Um, so yeah, another thing you may not know is I keep a sketchbook, uh, one for drawing, one for acrylic and one for um, watercolour painting uh, because I like to uh, do um, scenical paintings in watercolour and I just like to keep them because it helps keep the creative juices flowing so yeah I keep those on hand and you know when we're out and stuff I do you know a little watercolour painting or a sketch of something um, just to kind of you know to draw different things, um, things that I not not learn to talk, not normally <laughs> do um, off the top of my head indoors. So we do that, but that's another thing with the struggle with art is the uh, the creative ideas. So yeah, as I do these, I always struggle with uh, thinking of what to paint. Um, so I always have to get a, a reference photo online and copy that basically. Um, so that's what this is. This is the scene from, as I said at the beginning, the scene from Mary Poppins with the um, carousel horses that come to life. And yeah, so I'm using a reference photo. Um, and that's just how I um, do it. I do think it's you know always a good idea to use a reference photo because sometimes your um, photographic memory doesn't always remember the smaller details. You know what Mary Poppins looks like and you kind of know what Bert looks like but then your um, your photographic memory doesn't you know remember the specifics as such. It just depends on you know how often you've looked at that item so like you know if you've got a dog at home, whatever breed, you see that dog every day, you would be able to, you know, in your head, paint a good picture of what that dog looks like. So, but obviously with Mary Poppins, I don't look at Mary Poppins every day. I don't have a, a photo on my wall of her. <laughs> so yeah, reference photos are important. So here we have gotten her face down and I'm kind of happy with it. So we are moving on to her clothing. And this was the difficult part because all of her clothing in this scene is white and her dress is lace. So what I'm doing right now may look odd. I'm not purposefully painting her naked. <laughs> it's just um, the dress that she's wearing is uh, made of lace I guess uh, we'll call it lace and you can see obviously her skin tone through the lace so I'm putting that base coat down of her skin tone we're just we're not leaving her like this don't worry it's not that kind of channel <laughs> we're just plotting her out so that we can get her clothes on <laughs> so now I'm doing that veil that's attached to her hat that goes under her neck that keeps her hat on just in case a blustful wind wants to come along and blow it away. This was a struggle because it's a veil kind of thing. Um, it's supposed to be sheer, but it's there's a hard um, 
middle ground, I guess, of making it too sheer that you can't see it or too much that it looks like she's literally wearing a spaceman helmet. Great. Now all I can see is her wearing a spaceman helmet. Perfect. <laughs> if you see a spaceman helmet like I do now, then put it in the comments. Quotation, I see it. So I see it with quotation marks. Because that's all I see now is her with a spaceman helmet on. <laughs> so this is where another struggle comes along. Her dress is made of lace, as I said. It's sheer. So I'm trying to add the white on and I'm like, well, it's just blending in with the skin tone. This isn't working. So yeah, what do I do? <laughs> so I'm going in with her collar because you can definitely see that. Um, it's very, you know, ruffled up in white. So that kind of sticks out. And then she has this red uh, ribbon, I guess. Um, just there on her neckline so that's fine could do that but it's just the lace part and then I remembered I have this this might work I'm hoping it's not going to be too big of a pattern that it will look odd so I put glue on where I want the lace to go cured it for its max time until it becomes invisible and then lay that on and rub 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 until it's fully, fully stuck to the nail and then very slowly and carefully peel it away. And unfortunately, the glue is still a bit tacky at the bottom there. And I can't stress enough, just make sure that you fully, fully cure the glue so that it is really on there. But I'm happy with how it turned out. It looks okay. So I went and done the rest of her dress, as you can see on her chest there. You can kind of see the lace pattern. Um, and I think it worked out. It's not, you know, perfect, but it's <laughs> it's there. Um, it could be cheating uh, because it's not painted. It's not real, like, you know, it is real nail art, but I didn't paint the, the lace. But I, I couldn't. <laughs> that would have been so intricate and time consuming for you to watch me do that so we took a shortcut so there she is and now I can top coat her and I'm okay with how she turned out but this is the thing with depth and not using black too much and just focusing on the shading her dress kind of just blends in doesn't it and the hat is a bit weak her dress isn't like you can't see the like the oomph of her dress but we're just gonna leave it it's fine i'm practicing i'm learning how to do realism and portraits and stuff like that so we can only get better <laughs> but yeah so that's mary poppins complete and now on to Bert so we're doing the exact same step as we did with Mary Poppins and um, his skin tone is a little bit darker than Mary Poppins so I'm going to go in with a little bit more uh, shading on him um, just a little bit more you know darker and he was definitely like scaring me because the reference photo that I'm using is Oh, the faces that that man pulls, like, <laughs> he's very expressive with his face. <laughs> and it's kind of, you know, scary in a way. Um, so, yeah. So here I am, I'm just putting down all of the shading, get that all set. And now we can place in where um, his eyes should be and roughly the shape also would be helpful to get the right shape in at this point too. So here we are, he looks absolutely terrifying. Like, I'm not liking this at all. <laughs> he looks like an old man. He's not an old man. He's, <laughs> but he looks so old. <laughs> but he's so expressive with his face. He's like, you know, forced all these like lines and 
wrinkles into his face and it's just like, oh, how do I still make you look young? Like, you know, he wasn't old in the movie. He, he was still quite young. Um, not like, you know, 16, but he wasn't old. But <laughs> I feel like I'm painting him so old. Oh, well, <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> I don't know what to say. I've gone speechless. Here we go. We'll add more wrinkles to it. Let's just make him older. <laughs> Is it looking like Bert? No. <laughs> it's like one of those games. Can you tell what it is yet? Doesn't look like Bert to me. <laughs> so he's in this part. He's got a little straw hat on. So I'm just plotting that out onto his little head. And yeah, it's kind of... He looks like a farmer. <laughs> he definitely looks like a farmer right now. He's about to go out and do his crops. I'm not saying that farmers are old either, <laughs> in case you're a farmer. Great, I would love to have a farm, but he, he just looks really old. <laughs> so I've added more highlights onto him um, because also he has quite a shiny face. I'm not doing very well on him <laughs> at all. His lips are too red. He looks like he's just literally had some cherry aid. Oh. Do you think it looks like Bert? There's a lot of wrinkles there. So I've just kind of, I'm like, okay, moving on. Let's move on to his hat and just forget about that. I'm a poet now. And yeah, let's hope that a bit of color and a bit of, you know, his outfit will kind of distract you <laughs> and make you think, oh yeah, that's Bert, just from his hat and his jacket. <laughs> Wishful thinking. So here we go. We're doing his little bow tie. He's got his little cheeky face on with his little hat. And we are just finishing him up now. So there's his little bow tie, nice and blue. And now with his jacket, it's super easy. It's red, white, yellow, orange, and then again, red, white, yellow, orange. <laughs> Just like that, and I've done the same on the other side. And I, sorry, I could not look at it for any longer. So I top coated it and called him done. He was tricky. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below if I did a good job or not. I need to know. <laughs> I don't know whether my, you know, school art teacher would be very impressed. So just be my school art teacher for me and let me know if I did a good job or not. <laughs> or if it needs more practice. <laughs> you could be brutal as you like. I don't mind. I'm good with um, constructive criticism. <laughs> That's how you improve. It's how you get better in life. You've got to, you know, take the good. I'm still talking about Bert. We're doing a horse now. Let's talk about the horse. <laughs> so this is Mary Poppins' horse. It is a duplicate. Um, you won't see that me do that other duplicated nail, but it is the exact same horse, but just in a different color. So, Mary Poppins horse is this purple and blue with curly hair and a little Mary Poppins hat on the top of her head whereas Bert's horse it has not got a Mary Poppins hat um, and he is orange and reddish kind of colours so you'll see at the end of the video I'm getting dry mouth now I've been talking too much <laughs> but I'm gonna carry on because we're still going, we're still going. So with this, I struggled with this one because the horse, they don't come to life, well they do come to life, think this through. They do come to life, but they turn into cartoon horses. So they don't become real horses, which threw me off because I thought that they were real, but they're not, they're cartoon horses. 
So this is kind of realism with a bit of cartoony. <laughs> but you know, it was nice to be able to have a break from the realism-ish, if I could call it that. And you know, have an easier job with these horses and do a bit of more cartoony, easier art. <laughs> I may have cheated. Honestly, no, I didn't. I thought they were, they were real. I honestly, in my memory, I thought that they were real horses. I guess, you know, it's like a, it's a conspiracy, if you like. <laughs> but yeah, they, they, they turn into cartoon horses. So I'm just adding in the final little details now. Just making it pop that little bit more. And then we can go in and top coat that one. And that is Mary Poppins horse all done. And here they are all together. And that is the end of the video. If you did enjoy the nails, please do leave it a like. And also if you enjoy these style of video, did you just see that all? If you, if you saw something just then, what's going on with this video? <laughs> I swear a knob just flew right past me. Mm. Yes! We watch it if you didn't see it. I'll edit it, I'll edit it, and I'll show you that orb because I saw it. If it's not there in the editing, then this is going to be a really weird outro for all of us. But anyway, with orbs aside, if you enjoyed this video, you liked how it turned out and you like this style of video, please do leave it a like and let me know in a comment section down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe and turn on the bell notification button. And let's, let's just breathe, take it in, we did it. So with all that said, Happy creating and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.